Hi subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vivs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm gonna start talking about dynamic method dispatch with the help of an example. In the previous video, I was talking about this in a conceptual level and you guys clearly had no idea about why we would use this. Let's take a look at an example. I'm trying to make a blog reader. What I have is five different developers from the different parts of the world and we all are gonna collaborate together and we're gonna make this reader. So first, let's say this is me, who wants to read from Mashable. So I'll say Mashable reader, I'm like a class. I'll have a method called read from Mashable that will read the data from Mashable's blog. Another guy, somewhere in another part of the world, is gonna work on TechCrunch. So he's gonna make a class called TechCrunch viewer, and he's gonna make a method called view TechCrunch that's gonna read data from the TechCrunch blog. Same with another person from some another part of the world, there's a life hacker blogger and there's a method load life hacker. Same further again, PC word browser, browse PC word and digit scanner scan digit. Do you guys notice some inconsistency over here? Now at my end here on my side, I have to take the code from everybody. I have to put it together and make this application work. So everyone has having different class names. Okay. Everybody has different method names. Okay. So there starts the confusion. You see, people don't follow a standard format when asked to do stuff like this. And that's why you have polymorphism. Now let's take a look at how the same thing works with polymorphism here. First of all, what I'm gonna do is create a class called reader. It will have a single method called read from blog. I will tell everybody to extend this class, or I should say subclass reader, and override this method read from blog. In other words, define this method in their own words for their purpose. So first of all, it's me who's gonna make Mashable Reader. I'm gonna extend that from Reader, have the method read from blog. Now here, the code inside read from blog will do the work of reading data from Mashable. The other person somewhere in the world will make TechCrunch Reader, which will again subclass Reader. He will have the same method read from blog. We'll have a series of steps to read from TechCrunch. Same goes ahead with the other person, life hacker reader, read from blog, PC world reader, read from blog, digit reader, read from blog. So now if you see, things have gotten much easier because everybody is following a standard format. The method read from blog is common everywhere. What changes is what is being read. The TechCrunch guy may have a set of statements that will read from TechCrunch. The life hacker guy will have another set of statements that will read from life hacker, but the method name is same, read from blog. So let's go to NetBeans and see how this is going to be used in dynamic method dispatch. So coming over to NetBeans, let's take a look at how we can do this. The other people will probably give you the code in separate files or they will have it uploaded on some site like GitHub or Bitbucket. But I'm going to assume for a second that all the files are present within the same class. So here what we have is class Mashable Reader which you made yourself. You want to make sure that this extends your reader class. At the same time what you're going to have is your method public void read from blog inside which you'll have a println statement which says reading from Mashable. The same way others are going to have classes that are going to do the same thing. So let me go ahead and write those. So at this point I have all the classes Mashable Reader, TechCrunch, Life Hacker, Digit, PC World. All of them have the same method read from blog, but what they have is a different statement inside each of these methods. Now you guys are like, okay, there's a class reader, there's a read from blog, but they could have written any method name here. Why read from blog everywhere? Now I can also force the other person to make this method read from blog at all cost. And I'll be talking about how to force it using abstract classes or interfaces in the upcoming videos. But for now, let's just assume that the class reader had this method read from blog which was overridden by all the other people out there. So how can we use this in our main program? Let's take a look at that. First thing that we need to do is let the user enter the input as to which blog he wants to read. Let's go and do that with a buffer read. So first we want to print a statement to the user saying enter the blog from where you would like to read. And we'd also give options like one means Mashable, two means TechCrunch and so on. So let me type that complete statement here. So at this point I have the complete print statement which says enter the blog from where you want to read. One is Mashable, two TechCrunch, Lifehacker, PC World and Digit. Now what we need to do is take the input in the form of an integer. Let's say int number. 
something like that so go ahead and say integer dot parse int so with that done there's some error that we need to handle because reading operation may throw an exception so we will say throws exception at the top again if you don't know reading input don't worry about it too much I'll be talking about exceptions as well in the upcoming videos but for now the basic assumption is that trying to read throws an exception so now what I want to do is based on the value of number I want to read the appropriate block so what am I gonna do create objects of everything no this is what I do I use dynamic method dispatch first I make an object of reader by saying reader reader equals to null okay now reader reader okay that name is classing up with a reader above so we need to give it some other name let's say reader blog reader over here over here so now if the number let let me write a switch case statement for that I'm gonna say switch number if it is one we want to read mashable if it is two we want to read tech crunch and so on so let me complete the switch state now notice how I have used the super class reference variable over here blog reader now case one blog reader is gonna equal a new mashable reader object over here for case two blog reader will equal a new tech crunch reader over here remember super class reference variable can refer a subclass object and that's exactly what I'm trying to do over here is a new life hacker reader and so on so let me go and finish this as so notice carefully I have reader equals null now case one it gets initialized mashable reader case two it gets initialized with tech crunch reader and also there's a default case here where I have said please enter a valid site so what I want to do first is I want to check if it's null or not so I'm gonna say if blog reader is not equals to null then only perform the reading operation otherwise why would I do this take a look at this let's say I enter the number six here that the user entered the blog number from where you want to read the user says six number is six over here since any case doesn't handle six it's gonna go to default where it's gonna print select a valid reader but if you go into default the value of blog reader variable is null so you want to make sure that your program doesn't crash and therefore you say if blog reader not equals null then you say blog reader dot read from blog so let's run this and let me show you the magic here so let's run this by saying shift f6 at this point just enter the blog from where you want to read if I enter one it says reading from mashable because when you enter one numbers value becomes one case one is executed inside case one blog reader of holds the object of mashable reader class now if you guys remember mashable reader it had this method read from blog so when I say blog reader dot read from blog it will be this method that gets called and says reading from mashable however if I run this again if I enter two here it says reading from tech crunch if I enter six here it's gonna say please select a valid site so this is how dynamic method dispatch is used in other words this object is a super class object and it will point to different subclass objects at all the times so there's reference variable I'm sorry about that blog reader is a reference variable that's gonna point to different subclass objects all the time and depending on the current subclass object here at the bottom it's gonna call the method from that particular class in other words if it was initialized with mashable reader it will call read from blog that belongs to the class mashable reader if it was initialized with TechCrunch reader it will call the read from blog from this class which is our TechCrunch reader over here so this is how you guys are supposed to use dynamic method dispatch and this is the kind of problem it helps to solve when there are five or six people working on something very similar but still a bit different so hopefully you guys have understood the basic idea about this we'll be talking further about abstract classes interfaces and other stuff in Java in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching I'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day